what we're going to do today is show you how to add a 3D model to the motion controller pawn. So when you're in VR, you can actually see where your head is in relation to the world. So if you have a mirror or just shading like like dynamic shadows, so you can cast a shadow of where the head is or the controllers, basically so you can see yourself in the editor. So what I've got here is I've got a simple scene set up from the VR template except I've added a mirror just so we can use this to see where where we are and what the mesh looks like once we've got it in there so I'll move the camera closer but what you're first going to need to do is have access to some 3d models that you want to use so I've actually got some from Sketchfab by a, a guy on there called Eternal Realm who created some VR headsets he's got Vive, Vive Pro, Oculus Rift, Google Daydream I think models on there which are free to download just need to give them some credit so I'll leave a link in the description for that and this is the ones that I'm using so with these in I've already imported them just to save a bit of time what we need to do is actually open up the browse to asset so for the player we can access that and where the VR camera is we actually need to add a static mesh as a child so you see now it's a child of the camera what this does is it locks the mesh to the camera's position so if you move the camera which is essentially your head the mesh will move with it so we'll first load in a mesh uh, load it in a vive the vive model that i've got you can see it's the wrong way around so we're just gonna position that a little bit oh there it is and move it down so you can see in the bottom right of the viewport we actually have a the VR porn camera so we can see where it is so you can see if we move it we've got to position it so it's technically behind the camera but it's close enough that it still feels like it's being worn by the user so with that done and it's the right way around we can actually clear the mesh so we don't see anything there this uh, make sure we're lined up yep this just allows us to set the mesh in the event graph. So in the event graph, we're actually going to use the setup player height for various platforms. So when the pawn's launched or brought in, an event begin player fires, which gets the HMD device connected to the console. So in this case, I'm running through Oculus. So it's only going to show the Oculus HMD. But if you are running through Steam and using the HCC Vive or the new Steam VR, this would actually fire off this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two and we'll hook that back up in a bit. But I'm going to get a reference to the static mesh. I'm going to say set static mesh. If I can spell it properly. That's the wrong one. Uh, set static mesh. Cool. So we'll plug this into the Oculus. And then I'll find my model. So it's named Rift SF. Cool. So that's that one done. What we'll do now is actually copy this and plug it into the Steam VR. And if I search the Vive, so this one's called Vive Pro, and hook that up as well. Now what it'll do is when it's launched, it'll detect which HM which HMD is actually connected to the console or your desktop and then launch that headset so the mesh from that so plugging them both back into static uh, set tracking origin will be fine so I'll just bring it back in so you hit save and if I go to the viewport you can actually see that there is no HMD visible here which means we're not setting one so if I move this to the side and we launch and put the headset on you'll see we actually have a shadow. So it's spawning the Oculus. It's using the correct headset, which is really good. And you can actually see it in the mirror as well, which is awesome. The only thing is, I don't think the hands cast shadows. So what we're gonna do is I'll enable them and then that, that should be it. So back out, I'm just gonna use 
Rush to our set and open up the motion controller. And in here, we just need to get the hand mesh. Scroll down on the right and do cast shadow. Well, save. And now we press play again. We got shadows. So just by doing this, it brings more emphasis into the VR world. So you actually feel like you're in it a little bit more because you can see where you're headed. It's it's not much, but it does make a difference when you're in it, and especially if you're working in a theme for ArcViz, so architectural visualization. Having a HMD so a user can put it on and look at themselves in a mirror while walking around an apartment or seeing the reflections during gameplay. It just allows them to immerse themselves in the in the environment a lot more. Yeah, so I hope that helped. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you've got any more ideas or anything that you want to see for VR, maybe something that we can do with this or look at the mirrors or something, we can see what we can do. Just drop a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date. I'll start doing these pretty much weekly with a, a mini vid in between. And we'll see how it goes.